Hello and welcome to Eurogamer's Gran Turismo 6 spoiler cast, which is funny because the car's got spoilers in it. I see what you did there. I know, I've used that joke like twice already on the website, I don't know how many times more I can get away with it, but like over the next 15 minutes I might try and get it in as much as possible. Just put as many racing cliches in there as possible, like I, I feel like I've used them all up in my years and years of writing about racing games. That's the problem, there is a finite number of racing cliches and I've definitely gone through all of them. Uh, Shall I introduce myself? Yes, I will, well, let's do that, I should introduce myself as well. Go on then. Um, um, hi, I'm Martin Robinson. I'm Eurogamer's Features Editor and uh, Car Manic, and you are Mike Janelle. Yep, uh, Oxbox co-editor, so outsidexbox.com, uh, which is weird because this is a PlayStation game, but it's fine because I really like cars, so I like Gran Turismo. Yeah, that's right. No one will know on Oxbox that you've been uh, talking about PlayStation games. It's quite alright. So here we are at Silverstone, right? Yes, we are at Silverstone. We've been playing the GT6 um, Academy demo uh, for... It's been out just over a week now, um, and... I kind of desperately played it for hours when it first came out, thinking I had a chance of being a GT3 driver, which is the ultimate prize, and then I realised I'm not all that, um, but I'm still playing it for, for shits and giggles. I think this handling model, this new handling model, makes hot lapping in GT fun again, even on circuits that aren't the Nürburgring. Hot lapping's always fun. The one thing this has done, actually, I've always really despised uh, the new Silverstone. I didn't like Silverstone like mm. back in its pre-2010 configuration, um, but I kind of like Silverstone, and I think GT6 handling model's done that. I don't know if it's just going to do that to all tracks, but I, it, it, it makes it it makes it makes click. Mm, yeah, I think you know, now that you have that weight distribution to, to worry about and stuff, you realise the genius of the Maggots Beckett's complex, which, which is, we're flying through right now. Yeah, which is where we are right now. Um, um, you realise just how skillful you have to be to, to uh, avoid losing any time through that, that sequence of high speed corners. Yeah, it's something you alluded to in your um, uh, feature last week. The weight transfer is just, in it's just incredible and that's where well, the first time I went through Beckett's in the um, 370Z car, it was just an absolute revelation. Just the, the stuff you've got to do and the amount of play in it, um, mm. in, in every sense of the word really, because it was there's a lot of play in the, in the suspension, the way it's travelling around, there's play, it just feels more playful than our mm. uh, previous Gran Turismo games. Yeah, I think I described it in the feature as like it's defibrillated the car. You know, it feels alive again. It feels like a you know moving, a, you know, a, a, a lump of mass filled with forces going in all sorts of directions and yeah. things. And it's your job to kind of lasso those different elements and and kind of stick together a, a really good lap. And that's that's what driving cars fast is like. And obviously, the cars in this game. I mean, this is a 370Z and it's a tuned 370Z, but it's a road car essentially. So it's mm -hmm. got road car suspension. Um, and I think you'll find the racing cars uh, are completely different, particularly in terms of how aero loads up if they've got a, a, a sort of strong aerodynamic package. You'll feel that downforce start to press the car down on that suspension. You've got experience with that, haven't you? You've, you've tried the Delta Wing. In, yes, uh... yeah. So I've tried the Nissan Delta Wing at E3, which is uh, was fantastic fun, actually. I, it's one of those cars that doesn't really make sense when you look at it uh, running around a track but actually when you, you drive it you get a feel for the way it kind of almost steers from the back that's how I felt anyway um, and yeah the aero loads up it's very very quick through sort of high speed corners so it's a very interesting piece of machinery and great that that relationship with Nissan that uh, Gran Turismo has has meant that that, get, that car is drivable it's brilliant it's really really good fun yeah and I guess uh, mere mortals like us uh, like me uh, will be able to get to have a go in a more race tuned uh, car when the GTR GT3 GTR comes to a demo on 28th of July which is not that far away right yeah and that that car most recently seen at the Nürburgring 24 yeah. hours uh, driven by Yamauchi himself yeah exactly yeah this is a guy who goes out racing and he was apparently jumping off the car into the demo and pod into, yeah. the, into the demo pod to, to continue practicing during the race which is bonkers because obviously it's a 24 hour race and you're already knackered um, but that car was one of my favourites in GT5. I thought it handled brilliantly in GT5, but I get the feeling that this is going to spoil it for me. Yeah, it was my go-to Nordschleife car, the, um, mm. the GT3 G uh, GTR. I think maybe because I kind of had such a soft spot for seeing Kaz um, just uh, throw it around there for 24 hours. There's a fantastic photo of him getting the front wheels off the ground yeah. by a good two foot over the uh, footpaths. But we're praising like Gran Turismo f uh, 6's uh, new handling model so much and it's, it's not to say that Gran Turismo had a bad handling model in the first place. I no. still, I, I play GT5 more than I play most other racing games still uh, and I think it's got an exceptional handling model but um, this just comes on just leaps and bounds. How do you think it compares to something like Forza? Um, see I've always had a uh, this thing with Forza where I think Forza plays better on a controller yep. and 
Gran Turismo plays better on a wheel. I've always much preferred Gran Turismo on a wheel. And my preference is usually to to uh, go towards a steering wheel. So I do spend quite a lot of time playing Gran Turismo in spite of the fact that I do like Forza a lot. Um, I think it's going to be really, really interesting to spend a bit more time with Forza 5. But from what I've played on the steering wheel, it, it still handles very much like Forza 4 did, which mm -hmm. was... Not a bad thing, but um, it's, it, this is much more to my tastes, I think. Yeah, I like Fortra. I, I love Fortra as well. Um, I think it's, it's a great game, but um, I think it's fair to say it doesn't. It doesn't feel as simulation-minded. Um, it it, it, mm. it does, It's a lot more. Um, it plays a lot more fast and loose, I think, with what it does with the cars. Yeah, I, it's it's really tough because what you end up with is a, a situation where everyone's striving towards realism and everyone's coming up with different results. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I know that the Forza guys plug in real figures into their into their handling model and they will tell you that they have you know worked this stuff out uh, and they've got it down pat. But obviously, it feels completely different from Gran Turismo, and I, I think it comes down to you know a, a handling model that resonates with you. And I think. People have their favourite sims, but uh, ultimately I, I do feel like this handling model in particular has had a transformative effect on a game GT5 that already felt great. Yeah, it's weird because the whole reality thing is sometimes a bit of a misnomer, I think, unless you've driven uh, 370Z, which actually mm. I, I, I have actually done quite lucky. Oh, yeah. Clang, run, that yeah. was you yeah. dropping that. Uh, but only around a car park, uh, and from my limited experience for 370Z around a car park, it felt like the 370Z in this. But I've um, it, it, it's, it's weird because you, unless you've actually driven these cars at high speed it's hard to say if it is realistic or mm. not and I'd say Gran Turismo does seem to capture the characteristics of cars which I have driven quite well mm. I think they do they do, do a good job of getting that kind of personality that you know tendencies towards understeer or oversteer it all it all feels kind of logical um, but I, I do think that ultimately you're, you're sort of uh, you're constrained by the fact that it's it's very rare that even if you have one of these cars um at home that you'd be driving it to the limits that you do here unless you're like a track day regular um, and I, I've seen a lot of like criticism about how much play in the suspension there is and how much yeah. the front of the car lunges and um, and leans into corners but I, I get the feeling it's you know we, we are this is definitely a step forward from GT5 there's no doubt about it it feels much more convincing much more plausible here comes the bummer like I play a lot of iRacing as well and I I, may, I, I guess it's stupid to say it's more realistic, but I've been having loads more fun with Gran Turismo than I have of iRacing, mm. uh, which I guess is always going to be the case with a console game, which is going to be a bit more casual and everything. Yeah. Um, I, I prefer it to iRacing right now. Mm. Well, I, I, well, I really struggle with iRacing, and I, I find it, it takes me a really long time just to get to the point where I can you know, get the car around the circuit and, and feel like even slightly hooked up, and that's before I even start like lapping. But I don't think necessarily making things difficult is necessarily making them more realistic or necessarily means that they're more realistic I, I feel like actually you could take a 370Z to, to Silverstone and probably keep it on the road quite easily, whereas I sometimes struggle in iRacing just to keep the thing on the road I haven't had that problem with, with GT6, I think it kind of it's got that balance and, and I'm, I'm not experienced enough to say whether that's necessarily more realistic, but it feels more like when I've driven cars fast Yeah. in the past, in controlled environments not on the roads. Well, I, I, I'm lucky enough to do track days in the in Lotus Elise every now and then. Um, and I, I, when my dad saw the Lotus Elise Mark One is was in it, and it's he's, he's a lease that I bombed around Brands Hatch. Uh, I let him have a go on it. Um, he can't do Brands Hatch, unfortunately, but we I took, he went around Nordschleife in, it in GT5, and he said it was just terrifying how hard it was. It's so much harder than mm. driving a real car. Well, you you lose those kind of those sensations of the weight shifting underneath yeah. your bum, and that's always going to be a problem unless you can buy one of those 16 grand sort of hydraulic simulator rigs and at that point you might as well just buy a Lotus Elise and yeah. go and do some track days um, but actually a lot of that feel has uh, has translated in, in the GT6 demo for me certainly I'm talking about playing on a steering wheel with force yeah. feedback and things like that but I have a much better feel for what the car's doing where the weight is shifting and it's not just it's easy to assume that's going to be an impediment this this weight shifting over the center of gravity all, all this stuff actually you can use it to your advantage you know i'm i'm convinced that the off-road stuff the rally stuff is going to make so much more sense in gt6 than mm -hmm. it did in gt5 because you'll be able to feel that weight shifting which is such a crucial part of fast rally driving um and i you know you can use it to your advantage and you look at the top times on this challenge this gt academy challenge and they're guys who are really using that weight and yeah. kicking the car in you know doing stuff that would absolutely destroy your tires if you were doing it in real life 
that's quite the excursion there. Yeah, so um, that's me destroying the ties there. But like, again, well, we're just about to go through um, Becca and Magnus again as well. And again, mm. back to that weight distri- distribution thing. It makes it makes this more of a joy to drive through this whole complex than any other game, mm. uh, and it's more tangible as well. Maybe I think it, maybe you have to have that kind of exaggerated sense of play to be able to relate that sense of weight transfer. You can't normally get unless you can actually mm. feel the car kind of breaking away in your ass cheeks, is it? Uh, yeah, and I, I, you know, as as Martin Brundles pointed out uh, in the past, like the, the if you're just relying on what you can see, the point where the car. It has moved a, a few degrees in your in your vision based on where you're sitting in the car. The rear end has moved several degrees, and you're already in yeah. real trouble. Um, so having that feel is is um, is really really important. Having that kind of uh, pronounced feel, I think, is 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 a real benefit because otherwise, you know, what you're doing to get a fast lap isn't necessarily what you'd be doing in real life, and that's what we're all trying to get to, right? The stage yeah. where we're all better drivers in real life. Because not many of us can afford a sports car and, and to, to go racing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so obviously, the handling, I think we can safely agree, like works for both of us. Mm. So how about how it looks? Uh, I really like the I like the dynamic light, and I like what it implies, which is that uh, one of my favourite things about GT5, and I've not really had a chance to wax lyrical about it in in print or on online or wax lyrical to me, to me so many times. I have go for it again. exactly. So essentially, the thing I love about the uh, GT5 is the day night cycle yeah. on on Le Mans and the Nurburgring. It's absolutely glorious and I've I've been to Le Mans I've I've sat there and watched the sunset at Le Mans and the atmosphere is exactly replicated in uh, GT5 it's brilliant but what they've done here is there's a, a clearly a dynamic day night cycle here on on all the tracks including Silverstone you know you can play this track in the demo at different times of the day and so uh, what's what's really great about that is that you'll get things like 24 hour races at Silverstone or at Spa or yeah. places like that and because I love those kind of enduros and that, that, that the fact that that stuff's replicated and replicated so faithfully, um, it's great that it's going to be the same for, for all these tracks and, and real variety. You know, driving at night is completely different in Gran Turismo from driving during the day and it's going to be great to be able to do that on different tracks. Yeah, I went to Snets in 24 hours, which is slightly more glamorous than the ones, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's still nice to get that caption. I'm not sure if Snetterton's going to be in this. We can, we can hope and we can pray. There's, a, there's some quite left field stuff. I mean, obviously the recent announcement was Goodwood. Goodwood Hill is going to be in uh, yeah. Gran Turismo. What do you make of that? I'm really like I love Goodwood as an event. Um, it's it's one of the greatest collections of cars. It's one of the greatest things you can do. I think as a motor racing fan, it's, in some ways it's more it's more enjoyable than going to an actual motor race. So maybe that's because my age and I just like looking at old cars these days. Um, but the hill climb is not part of the appeal of Goodwood really. I mean, it's mm. a great to see the cars go up there, but it's just it's. Um, it's a it's it, it's inconsequential effectively that that bit of tarmac, it's just a nice place to parade cars. So um, for them to have spent time developing this and doing on that on that, it seems a bit odd. Part of me is a bit disappointed that it's in there. So I think they could have put better they could have spent that time putting better tracks in there. But on the flip side, um, it means that they're in tune with Goodwood and they're in tune with what Goodwood means, which is just a celebration of just the mm. finest cars in the world. Which is what Gran Turismo has has now become. You yeah. know, like I mean, it's a great it's a great driving game. But it's also this kind of ridiculous labour of love collection of bizarre, obscure racing cars that raced once and never raced again, and you can drive them yourself. Yeah, and I went to uh, I was at Goodwood last year with a couple of friends and with Ollie Welsh as well, um, and we were walking around one of the paddocks and just kind of like there's all these lovely cars and everything. We turned the corner and then just realised we were surrounded by 20 cars, which were all from Gran Turismo 5. And it's just complete coincidence. Obviously, Kaz goes to Goodwood as well, and it's, mm. I guess it informs the decisions. Um, he makes when he puts cars in the games, um, but there was like the the, the Sauber C9, I think it was, was there from Glorious. Um, yeah, the extra legendary uh, Gran Turismo 4 hot lapping car, yeah. one of the fastest cars you can drive around the Nova. That exact car was there as well, the exact one that they modelled on, on Gran Turismo 5, the XJR9 they modelled in there was there as well, and it's just it was just really odd seeing these these cars, which are kind of it's like it's like basically I guess walking into a car park and was on turn around and seeing Mario behind you. It's like oh my god, I know you. I've played you sometimes. This yeah. is really, really really odd. This is really that'd weird. be really creepy. That's it would like be the weird. Start of a horror <laughs> <film>. <laughs> that, that sounds, <laughs> that's the last thing I want to happen. Is it's to turn around and see Mario, Mario. <laughs> before he stabs you to death. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like Goodwood could have just been a photo mode location though, right? That w- that would have done the job. Yeah, yeah, um, totally. And I'd rather see some some proper racing tracks. I mean, there's been so many rumours. There's been like Pikes Peak rumours and Brands. Bathurst and Brands and things like that. And all of those would be brilliant. I would love to see those those in the game. Well, with the monthly DLC they're doing, maybe mm. it's a reality that they might they might get 
all this content in there. But um, I'm still not convinced we're going to see it out this year, though. Yeah, I. it feels like it's going to be on target, on target, on target, and then it's going to slip Christmas, and then we'll be waiting for ages again. But, you know, they've, they've all but said there's going to be a next-gen version as well, which is going to be kind of interesting. I, I feel like... Visually, this is a great looking game and, and, a, and real sort of end of the generation stuff. Um, I know there's been a few gripes about frame rate and things mm -hmm. like that, but this is a demo. It's, it's still early code, it's still yet to be optimized, and I, I think just in terms of the quality of the image, it, it's, it's leaps and bounds ahead of, uh, ahead of Grand Turismo 5. Yeah, no, totally, and I, I, the things it does with lighting are just incredible as well. The, um, there's another question mark over the sound, but uh, mm -hmm. that's something Kaz has kind of half said they're working on and says oh yeah that, that probably will change but I'm not super hopeful mm -hmm. yeah he said if they can squeeze it in right yeah so uh, yeah Gran Turismo sound still lags massively behind and it's something where like the Forza's cars all have a real ferocity to them I think even mm -hmm. you can even drive like the, the real low spec stuff in Forza and it's still, it's still ter you still put your foot down and it'll kind of give you this um, mm -hmm. just terrify you but um, in Gran Turismo you can take the most ferocious car in the world out Put it down. It sounds. Um, it sounds so timid. It just sounds like a, a, a light breeze. Basically. Mm. Yeah, it's it's something they. I think they do need to sort out. But you know, Grand Turismo has become such this like sprawling thing. And I got a bit of stick in the comments, certainly for uh, the physics um, article that I wrote for for Eurogamer, uh, because I, I said that I'm not that bothered about the AI, and I'm really not. Uh, often. All I really need from from racing game AI is that they're there and they're kind of like moving chicanes. It would be lovely, obviously, if they were, if the AI was improved in Gran Turismo, and I would love to see them really battling for corners and things like that. But currently, I would much rather the handling model was right, and even the sounds don't bother me as much as maybe they should. Um, yeah, I would, I would. It's, it's it would make such a huge difference if they're right though. But, but with the racing stuff, um, it's really like I don't think there is that there aren't that many games. In fact, I don't know of any games on the market which uh, do racing well, uh, offline racing well. Mm. Um, there I are used to a think, great deal. I used to, I used to convince myself a Toka Toka series is quite good for that, but um, in hindsight, I'm not sure if it was. And the only, the game I play for racing is iRacing mm. because the racing is just incredible. Um, yeah, and that's because it's online and everyone who's playing it is very, very serious. It's got an um, incredibly smart um, penalty system, which means that everyone respects each other and respects That's why I'm terrified of it, because I'll end up ploughing into the side of someone and they'll get really angry. I know I have as well. I'm, 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 I'm probably about two more collisions away from being banned from it forever. But um, <laughs> Yeah, but that, I, I don't know of many other games that have that. And so when I play Gran Turismo, I play it as a driving experience rather than a racing mm. experience. I think the key is that actually what you get is AI that's reactive when you're close to them. So yeah. they'll do some kind of authentic battling with you maybe but they're not racing each other. And that's the thing about motor racing is that you can be lapping really, really quickly and coming up on another battle. And, you know, AI drivers in most racing games just aren't battling each other. They're kind of basically in formation until you come and, like, disrupt the party. And I think that's something they really need to work on. Yeah, I'd like to see... That, that, would, be, that would be lovely to see proper racing in there. If they had proper racing series. I mean, they've got, the, they've got so many brilliant licenses in there. They've got effectively all the cars to do the Nürburgring 24 hours or something like mm. that. Would, would it be a, they wouldn't get like 180 cars on track but still to have something like 30 cars on track multi-class racing that would be incredible yeah I, w I mean I would love to see multi-class racing I don't think it's going to be sort of fully formed in this one they've, yeah. they've sort of made noises about it but not in any kind of convincing fashion um, but I agree actually you know GT racing at the moment in particular is, is a really really accessible sort of uh, licensing um, prospect because there's a lot of Mercedes BMs yep. Uh, there's the old Lambo in there, but Grand Turismo has the Lambo license anyway. So you could actually recreate a GT3 or a GT1 field really easily um, in terms of the, the licenses available. And that would be great. It's great racing at the moment. It's a good... There's a lot of equivalency stuff that means the cars are pretty well matched. And yeah, I mean, that, that stuff would be fantastic just to see a couple of extra licenses. It's certainly something uh, Kazunori Yamauchi has, has said he's interested in in the past I have a pet theory which is that IndyCar is going to be in because IndyCar is in every single game at the moment it's in Forza it's in R Factor 2 which is a racing sim coming out oh my god you know what I just realised as well it's actually also in Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed right yeah Danica <laughs> Patrick is well, yeah the, you cannot escape IndyCar it's even in Sonic and uh, All Sega All Stars Racing but I think they're being really really uh generous with the license I, I should say I don't think they're asking for any money for it and it's great because it's a single spec 
series, so all the cars are the same shape. So that makes it really easy. You only have to do one car and you've got a load of textures and yeah. you've got IndyCar in your game. And Indianapolis is already in there, so you could recreate the Indy 500. It makes a lot of sense. With the GT stuff, I think we're both just secretly pining for GTR 3, which may or may not ever happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, with the, uh, I remember the first ever interview, the first time I ever met Kaz, uh, we spoke, I asked him naively, uh, this was before the F1 license went to, um, to Codemasters, like literally a matter of weeks before it, and I asked if he wanted to do F1, he said he'd love to do an F1 game. Mm, he said but, that a few years ago, yeah, and obviously there are the odd F1 cars in in, uh, in Gran Turismo, but I don't think they'll ever do the full license, because I think Formula 1... They would demand their own separate game. Kaz, Kaz's ego in the demands of uh, FOM would not would not clash well at mm. all. But in that same interview as well as when he told me the damage was definitely coming to Grand Turismo Five Prologue, it never ever did. Never did. Yeah. Lied to you. Lied to your face, Martin. I know, and I think uh, I can I guess the damage is going to be pretty le- on the same level in Grand Turismo Six. Yeah, I think, I think they've said it's going to be, oh yeah, a similar sort of application. They may they may apply it to the new cars. There's going to be a, about 200 new cars on top of GC Five, I think. Um, and so they may apply it to them, but it's going to be very limited, isn't it? I mean, the F1 thing, I, I suspect they'll have more F1 cars in there as well. They'll probably have the Ferraris that they had in GC5, yeah. but they'll probably also have maybe... I, I suspect maybe the Red Bull partnership will continue. That was so close for GT5 with the X2010, mm-hmm. which is that concept vehicle that you unlocked right at the end of uh, GT5. The one lovely thing, and this is me clutching its drawers, uh, but uh, in the Goodwood screenshots they released it was on last year's Goodwood, which was mm-hmm. a celebration of Lotus. Right. And you know they have that massive display outside the um, Earl of March's house. Mm-hmm. Um, and on that, and fully modelled in Gran Turismo 6 now, is a uh, 49, right. a Rince 49, uh, Senna's what was it, the 9070? Okay. The camel one. Um, Lotus 25. And so they've modelled them <laughs> so surely surely it wouldn't take too much to kind of just they've taken I, the photos haven't they they've taken the photo I'm, I, I don't know how you make racing video games but surely you just take a photo of a car chuck some physics in it and then put it on the track yeah exactly you just pump the physics in syringe the physics yeah. into the car and then send it on its way so I'm hoping for some classic um Classic F1 stuff because that was in, it was in GT4. They had more classic F1 stuff, didn't they? But it was cut in GT5. I'm I don't recall actually whether they had that. They had a car based on the 1970. Was that in Grand Turismo? I can't recall. And but it, like I would that. I would love to see classic F1 stuff. And actually, to to mention Forza again, they've included the two cars from the Rush film in uh, Forza 5. So they're doing some classic F1 stuff. It would would make sense for GT to do that as well. Yeah, without wanting to. Um, to be cruel to Forza because I do love Forza but um, it is very much a marketing partnership whereas the one the partnership with Goodwood feels like a, a partnership of the, of the heart I think you know Kazanori is a, a motor racing fan first and foremost and that's yeah. why you see so many obscure cars in there um, and it, I think what's great is there's a sense of discovery as well about Western motorsport like Japanese GT has been represented in Gran Turismo since the very beginning mm-hmm. and has been like very comprehensively represented and you know, with each Gran Turismo game that goes on, like it feels like uh, Yamauchi gets more of an understanding of how motorsport works in Europe and how it works in the US as well. Obviously, NASCAR was a big, high-profile inclusion yeah. in GT5, and you know, it wasn't something he was overly familiar with until that game. But it's the, one of the most popular motorsports in the world, if not the most popular motorsport. Yep. Um, I'm going to wrap up there because um, we could literally talk for hours. In fact, we have been talking for hours about this game uh, before the spoiler cast, but uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about it for hours uh, afterwards as well. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Mark. No worries, thank you. Um, thank you very much for listening if you made it this far. Uh, sorry 